So I, like many of you, have been really loving Dirigible Derby. This mode is just the brawling dream. The close range combat is so, so much fun. And I thought, after giving so much attention to all of the German battleships that work so well, what's some other ships that would really do a good job? Minotaur actually kind of surprised me with its radar minnow actually kind of working. Admittedly, I did get a little lucky in that one. But I thought of Napoli. I thought Napoli is such a tanky ship with these devastating sap secondaries at close range. They just eat up anything that they can pen, which is battleship superstructures and most cruisers, especially light cruisers and especially destroyers. Destroyers are the big one here. And in this video, I didn't get very many good games at all. Napoli, I really struggled with trying to play it in Dirigible Derby. I don't know why. I think I might've got just a little bit unlucky. This salvo right here might show you a bit of the experience I was having. Yes, that is bow on citadel through just above the icebreaker into my citadel by Amonti at 12 kilometers, which he's not gonna have the best uh, plunging fire at 12 kilometers, let's say. It's pretty flat still. So a little unlucky there to eat a citadel. That pretty much summed up my sessions in the Napoli, at least in the dirigible derby mode. I have had great games in this ship before, and I know it's a really, really strong ship, but it just didn't go so well for me. And I'm not really sure why. Perhaps I pushed a little too aggressively, or just that I got a little unlucky on the teams. I ended up often needing to do these desperation charges because my team was just sitting back passively and, well, essentially dying for free. And then I would go in and try and do something like this where we're pushing it to a curve first Holland, uh, Sherman crossfire with a Monty and a Des Moines. Yeah, we're, we're gonna die here. I was hoping to take the Holland with me, but we just barely get killed beforehand. Napoli, of course, is not as tanky as a battleship, even though it is a very, very tanky cruiser. The smoke is not actually as effective as I thought it would be. And this is another game, actually. I'm not just uh, rewinding the footage. I happened to get mostly dirigible derby games on this map while I was playing the Napoli for whatever reason. The map pools were not very random to me today, but the Napoli did a little better in this one. I didn't push quite as aggressively and I tried to make use of my spokes a little more intelligently. There's so many hydros on these pushing German battleships, as well as just the radars, right? Lots of radars from Des Moines and Stalingrads, that kind of thing, negate the usefulness of this smoke screen. So I'm trying to play a little more passive, a little bit more intelligently, let's say. In this one, it is very close. Of course, this is where the game is at its most fun, for me, at least in this mode, where the paths of the two blimps just come together like this. It's a ton of fun. Everybody's in the same area, and I don't expect to live in a lot of these situations, so it's not like I'm expecting my ship to just magically outperform everyone. If I wanted that, I'd go play a carrier. And so that way with Napoli, I'm hoping to take as many one-on-ones as possible. I see a Hindenburg pushing, trying to get an angle on my Marceau, friendly uh, destroyer here who's doing a good job trying to get some torpedoes on these battleships as they push in. Unfortunately though for me and this Marceau, this Hindenburg stays angled and we don't really have the best crossfires from our teammates so he's gonna live long enough to kill the Marceau. But our secondaries are gonna absolutely tear him up. This sap secondaries are so 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 good. It's kind of ridiculous how much damage these things can do. Of course, they're short range, and of course, they don't actually have the uh, pen to get through the 30 millimeter side plating, at least from the little secondaries. But they're still gonna do a lot of work this game. I believe I got over 40k damage in this match, just from the secondaries alone. Of course, we have to stop because we know Hindenburg has torpedoes. We can't uh, push out too far now, which means we're gonna take some pain. Now comes a Grozovoy, which is definitely in secondary range. This ship is really, really good. I honestly think I just got a little unlucky playing the game today with my Napoli. I, uh, I'm not showing you all the games. I got a few other ones that ended even worse than that first one did. This was kind of the best one 
that I actually had here, where we're actually going to be able to take out this Grozovoy. We got a friendly Des Moines in this channel as well with us, so hopefully there's some crossfire potential, but they just have too many battleships pushing in here, and the overmatch is definitely going to kill the Des Moines, as you can see. Now we're getting outflanked by the enemy Montana. It's a little strange how passive my team has been playing and how quickly they've died for how passive they've been, but we're still going to have an opportunity to win this game. Pushing into a Kerr first, a Worcester, a Slava, all within four kilometers. The Worcester goes broadside though, and a really beautiful thing on the Napoli, of course, is the turret traverse. Just look how we're able to keep up with this Worcester, even though we have 254 millimeter guns. Yeah, pretty nice taking him out and getting some torps in on the Kerr first, but we end up dying, unfortunately. We still got 125k, and actually we hit another torp on that Montana that was pushing most likely. Unfortunately though, our Kerr first here at the end of the game could have gone bow in and tanked and been the hero to push our blimp along, but they're just playing a little bit too passive here and we're actually going to end up losing this one. Props to the enemy team for pushing well as a team, coordinating things and taking my guys out. I would have liked to win this one. I was just having a blast in that brawl. My heart was racing and I had a lot of fun. Unfortunately though, today was not going so well. I think the Napoli is better than what I've shown here today, but unfortunately I just didn't get those games to show you. But hey, that's World of Warships. You're not gonna have the best games all the time. As for the build, of course, I was going as much secondaries and tankiness as I possibly could. This is way I like to run my Napoli, at least in Dirigible Derby. I'll show you what I would change in random battles on the upgrades, but this commander I think works quite well, getting us extra heals, extra smoke screens, more HP to hopefully tank and not take citadels through our bow like we did in this one. <laughs> on to equipment though, I would probably recommend running either reload or range mod. If you don't know, Napoli and Petro are the two cruisers and actually ships in this game that benefit the most from range mod. Just a weird dispersion formula makes them actually benefit massively from increasing their range to give them far better dispersion. It's a weird thing, but uh, those two ships seem to benefit from it the most, and it's a noticeable change. So if you're worried about dispersion, probably go uh, range mod and aiming systems mod one. And if you're worried about secondaries, of course, the full secondary build. But if you're just trying to brawl and get the most out of your ship, I do think having better reload on your main guns is a little bit more uh, powerful than the full secondary build, since these guns are very good. They just don't quite have the best dispersion. But that's the Napoli. Let me know if you guys have been playing this ship in Dirigible Derby and how it's going. I'm sure it's better than what the experience I've had recently, but you can't have great games all the time, like I said. It's, uh, it's random, of course. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.